Winter Recess by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org, read by Roman Noble, RomanNoble.com. Part One. It is an hour before the hour of dawn. Set in mine hand my staff and leave me here outside the hollow house that blind man fear. More blind than I who live on life withdrawn and feel on eyes that see not but foresee the shadow of death which close Antigon. Here lay her living body that here lies dead. If man living know what thing is death, if life be all made up of blood and breath, and no sense be save as of ears and eyes, but heart there is not, tongue there is not found, to think or sing what verge hath life or bound. In the beginning when the powers that made the young child man a little loved him, seeing his joy of life and fair face of his being and bland and laughing with the man-child played as friends they saw in our divine one day king cadmus take the queen harmonia the strength of soul that builds up as with hands walls spiritual and towers and towns of thought which only fate not force can bring to naught took then to wife the light of all men's lands war's child and loves most sweet and wise and strong order of things and rule and guiding song it was long since, yea, even the sun that saw, remembers hardly what was, nor how long, and now the wise heart of the worldly song is perished, and the holy hand of law can set no tune on time, nor help again the power of thought to build up life for men. Yea, surely are they now transformed or dead, and sleep below this world where no sun warms, or move about and now in formless forms. Incognizable, and all their lordship fled, and where they stood up singing crawl and hiss with fangs that kill behind their lips that kiss yet though her marriage garment seeming fair was dyed in sin and woven of jealousy to turn their seed to poison time shall see the gods reissue from them and repair their broken stamp of godhead and again thought and wise love sing words of law to men i trss the prophet seeing in thebes much evil and the misery of men's hands who sow with fruitless wheat the stones and sands with fruitful thorns and fallows and warm glebes bade their hands old lust worse hap came to pass and which of you had heed of terrasas i am as time's self in mine own wearied mind whom the strong heavy-footed years have led from night to night and dead men unto dead and from the blind hope to the memory blind for each man's life is woven as time's life is of blind young hopes and old blind memories i am a soul outside of death and birth i see before me and afterward i see o child o corpse the live dead face of thee whose life and death are one thing upon earth where day kills night and night again kills day and dies but where is that harmonia o all beholden light not seen of me air and warm winds that under the sun's eyes stretch your strong wings at morning and thou sky whose hollow circle and girdling earth and sea all night the set stars limit and all day the moving sun remeasures ye i say ye heights of hills and thou disrian spring inviolable and ye towers that saw cast down seven kings keen sighted toward our seven-faced town and quenched the red seed of one sightless king and thou for death less dreadful than for birth whose wild leaves hide the horror of the earth o mountain whereon gods made chase of kings cithron thou that sawest on pentheus dead fangs of a mother fasten and wax red and satiate with a sun thy swollen springs and hurtst her cry fright all thine eyries nest who gave death suck at sanguine suckling breast yea in a grief more grievous without name Cursed too grievous for the name of grief, thou sawest and heardest the rumor scare belief. Even unto death and madness, when the flame was lit, whose ashes dropped about the pyre, that of two brethren made one sundering fire. O bitter nurse, that on thine hard bare knees rearest for his fate the bloody footed child, whose hands should be more bloody defiled, and the old blind feet walk wearily ways than these, whose seed brought forth in darkness into doom should break his fire out of his mother's womb i bear you witness as ye bear to me time day 
night, sun, stars, life, death, air, sea, earth, and ye that round the human house of birth. Watch with veiled heads and weaponed hands, and see good things and evil, strengthless yet and dumb. Sit in the clouds with cloud-like hours to come. Ye forces without form and viewless powers, that have the keys of all our years and hold, that prophecy too late with tongues of gold, and a strange speech whose words are perished ours, I witness to you what good things ye give, as ye to me what evil while I live. What should I do to blame you? What to praise? For floral hours and hours funeral? What should I do to curse or bless at all? For winter woven or summer colored days? Curse he that will and bless you whoso can? I have no common part in you with man. I hear a springing water whose quick sound makes softer the soft sunless patient air and the wind's hand is laid on my thin hair. Light as a lover's and the grasses round have odors in them of green bloom and rain sweet as the kiss wherewith sleep kisses pain i hear the low sound of the spring of time still beating as the low live throb of blood and where its waters gather head and flood i hear change moving on them and the chime across them of reverberate wings of hours sounding and the feel of the future air of flowers the wind of change is soft as snow and sweet the sense thereof as roses in the sun the faint wind springing with the springs that run the dim sweet smell of flowering hopes and heat of unbeholden sunrise yet how long i know not till the morning put forth song i prophesy of life who live with death of joy being sad of sunlight who am blind of man whose ways are alien from mankind and his lips are not parted within man's breath i am a word out of the speechless years the tongue of time that no man sleeps who hears i stand a shadow across the door of doom athwarts the lintel of death's house in wait nor quick nor dead nor flexible by fate nor quite of earth nor wholly of the tomb a voice a vision light as fire or air driven between days that shall be and that were i prophesy with feet upon a grave of death cast out and life devouring death as flame doth wood and stubble with a breath of freedom though all mankind were one slave of truth though all the world were liar of love that time nor hate can raise the witness of life that was given for love's sake and his laws their powers have no more power on they divide spoils wrung from lust or wrath of man or pride and keen oblivion without pity or pause sets them on fire and scatters them on air like ashes shaken from a suppliant's hair but life they lay no hand on life once given no force of their hath competence to take life that was given for some divine thing's sake to mix the bitterness of earth with heaven light with man's night and music with his breath dies not but makes his living food of death i have seen this who live where man or not in the high starless air of fruitful night on the serenest and obscurest height where dead and unborn things are one in thought and whence the live unconquerable springs feed full of force the torrents of new things i have seen this who saw long since being man as now i know not if indeed i be the fair body of wisdom good to see an evil whence my light and night began light on the goal and darkness on the way light all through the night and darkness all through the day mother that by that pegasian spring didst fold round in thy arms thy blinded son weeping o holiest what thing hast thou done what to my child woes me that see the thing is this thy love to me ward and hereof must i take sample of how the gods can love old child thou hast seen indeed poor child of mine the breast and flanks of pallas bear in sight but never shalt see more the dear sun's light o helicon how great a pay is thine for some poor antelopes and wild deer dead my child's eyes hast thou taken in their stead mother thou knewest not what she had to give thy goddess though then angered for mine eyes fame and foreknowledge and to be most wise and centuries of high thoughted life to live and in mine hand this guiding staff to be as i sight to the feet of men that see perchance i shall not die at all nor pass the general door and lintel of men dead yet even the very tongue of wisdom said what grace should come with death to teresas what special honour that god's hand accord who gathers all men's nations as their lord and sometimes with the secret eye of thought is changed with obscuration 
and the sense aches with long pain of hollow prescience and fiery foresight with force suffering bought seems even to infect my spirit and consume hunger and thirst come on me for the tomb i could be fain to drink my death and sleep and no more wrapped about with bitter dreams talk with the stars and with the winds and the streams and with the inevitable years and weep for how should he who communes with the years be sometime not a living spring of tears o child that guided of thine only will didst set thy maiden foot against the gate to strike it open ere thine hour of fate antigone men say that thou didst ill for love's sake and the reverence of his awe divinely dying slain by mortal law for love is awful as immortal death and though thee surely hath thy brother won rest out of sight of our world-weary son and in the dead land where ye ghosts draw breath a royal place and honour so waste thou happy thou earth have cold of thee to now so hast thou life and name inviolable and joy it may be sacred and severe joy secret sold beyond all hope or fear a monumental joy wherein to dwell secluse and silent a selected state serene possession of thy proper fate thou art not dead as these are dead who live full of blind years a sorrow shaken kind nor as these are am i the prophet blind they have not life that have not heart to give life nor have eyesight who lack heart to see when to be not is better than to be o ye whom time bears with for a span how long will ye be blind and dead how long make your own souls part of your own souls wrong son of the word of the most high gods man why wilt thou make thine hour of light and breath emptier of all but shame than very death fool wilt thou live forever thou that care with all thine heart for life to keep it fast shall not thine hand forgo it at the last lo thy sure hour shall take thee by the hair sleeping or when thou knowest not or wouldst fly as men died much mightier than thou shalt die yea they are dead men much more worth than thou the saviour of heroic lives that were is it not mixed into thy common air the sense of them is shed about thee now feel not thy brows a wind blowing from far aches not thy forehead with a future star the light that thou mayest make out of thy name is in the wind of thy same hour that drives blown within reach but once of all men's lives and he that puts forth hand upon the flame shall have it for a garland on his head to sign him for a king among the dead but these men that the lessening years behold who sit the most part without flame or crown and brawl and sleep and wear their life days down with joys and griefs ignobler than of old and care not if the better day shall be are these or art thou dead antigone part two as when one wakes out of a waning dream and sees with instant eyes the naked thought wherein the vision as a web was wrought i saw beneath the heaven of cloud and gleam ere yet the heart of this young sun waxed brave one like a prophet standing by a grave in the hoar between heaven was hardly beam or breath and all the colored hills and fields were gray and the wind wandered seeking for the day and wailed as though he had found her done to death and this gray hour had built to bury her the hollow twilight of a sceptre but in my soul i saw as in a glass a pale and living body full of grace there lying in over it the prophet's face fixed and the face was not of tirassus for such a starry fire was in his eyes as though their light it was that made the skies such eyes should gods have been when very love looked forth of them and set the sun aflame and such his lips that called the light by name and bade the morning forth at sound thereof his face was sad and masterful as fate and like a star's his look compassionate like a star's gazed on of sad eyes so long it seems to yearn with pity in all its fire as a man's heart to tremble with desire and heave as though the light would bring forth song yet from his face flashed lightning on the land and like the thunderer bearers was his hand the steepness of strange stairs had tired his feet and his lips yet seemed sick of that salt bread wherewith the lips of banishment are fed but nothing was there in the world so sweet as the most bitter love like god's own grace wherewith he gazed on that fair buried face grief and glad pride and passion and sharp shame wrath and remembrance faith and hope and hate and pitiless pity of days degenerate were in his eyes as an incorporate flame that burned about her 
and the heart thereof, and central flower was very fire of love. But all about her grave wherein she slept were noises of the wild wind-footed years, whose footprints flying were full of blood and tears. Shrieks as of menades on the hills that leapt and yelled as breast of raven, and their meat was the rent flesh of their own sons to eat. And fiery shadows passing with strange cries, and sphinx-like shapes about the ruined lands, and the red reek of parasitial hands. The intermixture of incestuous eyes and light as of that self-divided flame which made an end of the catamim name. And I beheld again and loathed the grave, and the bright body lain therein is dead, and the same shadow across another head, that bowed down silent on that sleeping slave, who was the lady of empire from her birth and light of all the kingdoms of the earth. Within the compass of the watcher's hand, all strengths of other men and divers powers were held at ease and gathered up as flowers. His heart was as the heart of his whole land, and at his feet as natural servants lay, twilight and dawn and night and laboring day. He was most awful of the sons of God. Even now men seeing seemed at his lips to see the trumpet of the judgment that should be. And in his right hand terror for a rod, and in the breath that made the mountains bow, the horned fire of Moses on his brow. The strong wind of the coming of the Lord has blown as flame upon him and brought down on his bare head from heaven fire for a crown, and fire was girt upon him as a sword, to smite and lighten on what was his trod. There fell from him the shadow of a god. Pale with the whole world's judgment in his eyes, he stood and saw the grief and shame endure, that he, though highest of angels, might not cure. And the same sins done under the same skies, and the same slaves to the same tyrant's throne, and fain he would have slept, and fain been stone. But with unslumbering eyes he watched the sleep, the sealed her sense whose eyes were sons of old, and the night shut and opened, and behold, the same grave where those prophets came to weep, but she that lay therein had moved and stirred, and where those twain had watched her stood a third, the tripled rhyme that closed in paradise, with love's name sealing up its starry speech, the tripled might of hand that found in reach, all crowns beheld far off of all men's eyes. Song, color, carven wonders of live stone, these were not but the very soul alone, the living spirit of the good gift of grace, the faith which takes on its own blood to give, that the dead veins of buried hope may live, came on her sleeping, face to naked face, and from a soul more sweet than all the south, breathed love upon her sealed and breathless mouth. Between her lips the breath was blown as fire, and through her flushed veins leapt the liquid life, and with sore passion and ambiguous strife. The new birth rent her and the new desire, the will to live, the competence to be, the sense to hearken and the soul to see, and the third prophet standing by her grave stretched forth his hand and touched her in her eyes, opened as sudden suns in heaven might rise and her soul caught from his the faith to save faith above creeds faith upon records born of the pure naked fruitful and awful morn for in the daybreak now that night was dead the light the shadow the delight the pain the purpose and the passion of those twain seemed gathered on that third prophetic head and all their crowns were as one crown and one his face with her face in the living sun for even with the communion of their eyes, his whole soul passed into her and made her strong, and all the sounds and shows of shame and wrong, the hand that slays, the lip that mocks and lies, temples and thrones that yet men seem to see, are these dead, or art thou dead, Italy? End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. The Song of the Standard by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage. Maiden most beautiful, mother most bountiful, lady of lands, queen and republican, crowned of the centuries whose years are thy sands, see for thy sake what we bring to thee, Italy, here in our hands. This is the banner thy gonfalon, fair in the front of thy fight, red from the hearts that were pierced for thee white as thy mountains are white, green as the spring of thy soul everlasting whose life-blood is light. Take to thy bosom thy banner, a fair bird fit for the nest, feathered for flight into sunrise or sunset, for eastward or west, 
fledged for the flight everlasting, but held yet warm to thy breast. Gather it close to thee, songbird or storm-bearer, eagle or dove, lift it to sunward a beacon beneath, to the beacon above. Green as our hope in it, white as our faith in it, red as our love. Thunder and splendor of lightning are hid in the folds of it furled, who shall unroll it but thou, as thy bolt to be handled and hurled? Out of whose lips is the honey, whose bosom the milk of the world? Out of thine hands hast thou fed us with pasture of color and song, glory and beauty by birthright to thee as thy garments belong. Out of thine hands thou shalt give us as surely a deliverance from wrong. Out of thine eyes thou hast shed on us love as a lamp in our night, wisdom a lodestar to ships, and remembrance of flame-colored light. Out of thine eyes thou shalt show us as surely the sun-dawn of right. Turn to us, speak to us, Italy, mother, but once and a word. None shall follow thee, none shall not serve thee, not one that has heard. Twice hast thou spoken a message, and time is a thirst for the third. Kingdom and empire of peoples thou hast, and thy lordship made one, North Sea and South Sea and Eastmen and Westmen that look on the sun. Spirit was in thee and counsel, when soul in the nations was none. Banner and beacon thou wast to the centuries of storm wind and foam, ages that clashed in the dark with each other and years without home. Empress and prophetess was thou, and what wilt thou now be, O Rome? Ah, by the faith and the hope and the love that have need of thee now, Shines not thy faith with the forethought of freedom, and burns not thy brow? Who is against her but all men, and who is beside her but thou? Art thou not better than all men? And where shall she turn but to thee? Lo, not a breath, not a beam, not a beacon from midland to sea. Freedom cries out for a sign among nations, and none will be free. England in doubt of her, France in despair of her, all without heart. Stand on her side in the vanward of ages, and strike on her part. Strike but one stroke for the love of her love of thee, sweet that thou art. Take in thy right hand thy banner, a strong staff fit for thine hand. Forth at the night of it lifted shall foul things flock from the land. Faster than stars from the sun shall they fly, being lighter than sand. Green thing to green in the summer makes answer, and rose tree to rose. Lily by lily the year becomes perfect, and none of us knows what thing is fairest of all things on earth as it brightens and blows. This thing is fairest in all time of all things, in all time is best. Freedom that made thee our mother and suckled her sons at thy breast. Take to thy bosom the nations, and there shall the world come to rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Downs by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Wallace. A faint sea without wind or sun, a sky like flameless vapour dun, a valley like an unsealed grave that no man cares to weep upon, bare without boon to crave or flower to save. And on the lip's edge of the down, here where the bent grass burns brown in the dry sea wind, and the heath crawls to the cliffside and looks down, I watch, and here beneath the low tide breathe. Along the long lines of the cliff, down the flat sea line without skiff or sail or backblown fume for mark, through wind-worn heads of heath and stiff stems blossomless and stark, with dry sprays dark, I send mine eyes out as for news of comfort that all these refuse, tidings of light or living air from windward where the low clouds muse and the sea, blind and bare, seems full of care. So is it now as it was then, and as men have been, such are men. There as I stood I seem to stand, here sitting chambered, and again feel spread on either hand sky, sea, and land. 
as a queen taken and stripped and bound sat earth discoloured and discrowned as a king's palace empty and dead the sky was without light or sound and on the summer's head were ashes shed scarce wind enough was on the sea scarce hope enough there moved in me to sow with live-blown flowers of white the green plain's sad serenity or with stray thoughts of light touch my soul's sight by footless ways and sterile went my thought unsatisfied and bent with blank unspeculative eyes on the untracked sands of discontent where watched of helpless skies life hopeless lies east and west went my soul to find light and the world was bare and blind and the soil herbless where she trod and saw men laughing scourge mankind unsmitten by the rod of any god out of time's blind old eyes were shed tears that were mortal and left dead the heart and spirit of the years and on man's fallen and helmless head time's disanointing tears fell cold as fears hope flowering had but strength to bear the fruitless fruitage of despair grief trod the grapes of joy for wine whereof love drinking unaware died as one undivine and made no sign and soul and body dwelt apart and weary wisdom without heart stared on the dead round heaven and sighed is death too hollow as thou art or as man's living pride and saying so died and my soul heard the songs and groans that are about and under thrones and felt through all time's murmur thrill fate's old imperious semitones that made of good and ill one same tune still then where is god and where is aid or what good end of these she said is there no god or end at all nor reason with unreason weighed nor force to disenthrall weak feet that fall no light to lighten and no rod to chasten men is there no god so girt with anguish iron zoned went my soul weeping as she trod between the men enthroned and men that groaned o oh, fool that for brute cries of wrong heard not the grey glad mother's song ring response from the hills and waves but heard harsh noises all day long of spirits that were slaves and dwelt in graves the wise word of the secret earth who knows what life and death are worth and how no help and no control can speed or stay things come to birth nor all world's wheels that roll crush one born soul with all her tongues of life and death with all her bloom and blood and breath from all years dead and all things done in the ear of man the mother saith there is no god o son if thou be none so my soul sick with watching heard that day the wonder of that word and as one springs out of a dream sprang and the stagnant wells were stirred whence flows through gloom and gleam thought's soundless stream out of pale cliff and sunburnt heath out of the low sea curled beneath in the land's bending arm embayed out of all lives that thought hears breathe life within life inlaid was answer made a multitudinous monotone of dust and flower and seed and stone in the deep sea rocks mid sea sloth in the live water's trembling zone in all men love and loathe one god at growth one forceful nature uncreate that feeds itself with death and fate evil and good and change and time that within all men lies at wait till the hour shall bid them climb and live sublime for all things come by fate to flower at their unconquerable hour and time brings truth and truth makes free and freedom fills time's veins with power as brooding on that sea my thought filled me and the sun smote the clouds and slew and from the sun the sea's breath blew and white waves laughed and turned and fled the long green heaving sea-field through 
and on them overhead the sky burnt red like a furled flag that wind sets free on the swift summer-coloured sea shook out the red lines of the light the live sun standard blown to lee across the live sea's white and green delight and with divine triumphant awe my spirit moved within me saw with burning passion of stretched eyes clear as the light's own first-born law in windless wastes of skies time's deep dawn rise and a poem this recording is in the public domain Mesidor by Algernon Charles Swinburne read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage Put in the sickles and reap, for the morning of harvest is red, and the long large ranks of the corn, colored and clothed as the morn, stand thick in the fields and deep, for them that faint to be fed. Let all that hunger and weep come hither, and who would have bread, Put in the sickles and reap. Colored and clothed as the morn, the grain grows ruddier than gold, and the good strong sun is alight in the mists of the day dawn white, and the crescent of faint sharp horn in the fear of his face turns cold as the snakes of the night time that creep from the flag of our faith unrolled. Put in the sickles and reap. In the mists of the day dawn white, that roll round the morning star the large flame lightens and grows till the red gold harvest rose full grown are full of the light as the spirits of strong men are crying who shall slumber asleep who put back morning or mar put in the sickles and reap till the red gold harvest rose for miles through shudder and shine in the wind's breath fed with the sun and a thousand spearheads as one, bowed as for battle to close, line and rank against line, with place and station to keep, till all men's hands at a sign, put in the sickles and reap. A thousand spearheads as one, wave as with swing of the sea, when the mid-tide sways at its height, for the hour is for harvest or fight, in the face of the just calm sun, as the signal in season may be, and the lot in the helm may leap, when the chance shall shake it but ye, put in the sickles and reap. For the hour is for harvest or fight, to clothe with raiment of red, O men sore stricken of ours, lo, this one is not it ours, to glean, to gather, to smite, let none make risk of his head, within reach of the clean scythe sweep, when the people that lay as the dead put in the sickles and reap. Lo, this one is not it ours, now the ruins of dead things rattle, as dead men's bones in the pit, now the kings wax lean as they sit, girt round with the memories of powers, with musters counted as cattle, and armies folded as sheep, till the red blind husbandmen's battle put in the sickles and reap, now the kings wax lean as they sit the people grow strong to stand the men they trod on and spat the dumb dread people that sat as corpses cast in a pit rise up with god at their hand and thrones are hurled on a heap and strong men sons of the land put in the sickles and reap the dumb dread people that sat all night without screen for the night all day without food for the day they shall give not their harvest away, they shall eat of its fruit and wax fat, they shall see the desire of their sight. Though the ways of the seasons be steep, they shall climb with face to the light, put in the sickles and reap. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode on the Insurrection in Candia by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage. I laid my laurel leaf at the white feet of grief, seeing how, with covered face and plumeless wings, 
with unreverted head veiled as who mourns his dead lay freedom couched between the throne of kings a wearied lion without lair and bleeding from base wounds and vexed with alien air who was it who put poison to thy mouth who lulled with craft or chant thy vigilant eyes o light of all men lamp to north and south eastward and westward under all men's skies for if thou sleep we perish and thy name dies with the dying of our ephemeral breath and if the dust of death o'ergrows thy flame heaven is also darkened with the dust of death if thou be mortal if thou change or cease if thine hand fail or thine eyes turn from greece thy first-born and thy first-fruits of thy fame god is no god and man is moulded out of shame is there change in the secret skies in the sacred places that see the divine beginning of things the weft of the web of the world is freedom a worm that dies and god no god of the free is heaven like as earth with her kings and time as a serpent curled round life as a tree from the steel-bound snows of the north from the mystic mother the east from the sands of the fiery south from the low-lit clouds of the west a sound of a cry is gone forth arise stand up from the feast let wine be far from the mouth let no man sleep or take rest till the plague hath ceased let none rejoice or make mirth till the evil thing be stayed nor grief be lulled in the lute nor hope be loud in the lyre let none be glad upon earth o music of young man and maid o songs of the bride be mute for the light of her eyes her desire is the soul dismayed it is not a land newborn that is scourged of a stranger's hand that is rent and consumed with flame we have known it of old this face with the cheeks and the tresses torn with shame on the brow as a brand we have named it of old by name the land of the royalist race the most holy land had i words of fire whose words are weak as snow were my heart a lyre whence all its love might flow in the mighty modulations of desire in the notes wherewith man's passion worships woe could my song release the thought weak words confine and my grief o greece prove how it worships thine it would move with pulse of war the limbs of peace till she flushed and trembled and became divine once she held for true this truth of sacred strain though blood drip like dew and life run down like rain it is better that war spare but one or two than that many live and liberty be slain then with fierce increase and bitter mother's mirth from the womb of peace a womb that yearns for birth as a man-child should deliverance come to greece as a saviour should the child be born on earth oh that these my days have been ere white peace and shame were wed without tortured dancers din round the unsacred marriage bed for of old the sweet-tongued law freedom clothed with all men's love girt about with all men's awe with the wild war-eagle mated the white breast of peace the dove and his ravenous heart abated and his windy wings were furled in an eerie consecrated where the snakes of strife uncurled and her soul was soothed and sated with the welfare of the world but now close clad with peace while war lays hand on greece the kingdoms and their kings stand by to see aha we are strong they say we are sure we are well even they and if we serve what ails ye to be free we are warm clothed round with peace and shame but ye lie dead and naked dying for a name o kings and queens and nations miserable o fools and blind and full of sins and fears with these it is with you it is not well ye have one hour but these immortal years these for a pang a breath a pulse of pain have honour while that honour on earth shall be ye for a little sleep and sloth shall gain scorn while one man of all men born is free even as the depth more deep than night or day the sovereign heaven that keeps its eldest way so without chance or change so without stain the heaven of their high memories shall nor wax nor wane 
as the soul on the lips of the dead stands poising her wings for flight a bird is scarce quit of her prison but fair without form or flesh so stands over each man's head a splendour of imminent light a glory of fame re-arisen of day re-arisen afresh from the hells of night in the hundred cities of crete such glory was not of old though her name was great upon earth and her face was fair on the sea the words of her lips were sweet her days were woven with gold her fruits came timely to birth so fair she was being free who is bought and sold so fair who is fairer now with her children dead at her side unsceptred unconsecrated unapparelled unhelped unpitied with blood for gold on her brow where the towery tresses divide the goodly the golden gated many crowned many named many cityed made like as a bride and these are the bridegroom's gifts anguish that straightens the breath shame and the weeping of mothers and the suckling dead at the breast white breast that a long sob lifts and the dumb dead mouth which saith how long and how long my brothers and wrath which endures not rest and the pains of death ah but would that men with eyelids purged by tears saw and heard again with consecrated ears all the clamour all the splendour all the slain all the lights and sounds of war the fates and fears saw far off a spire with crash of mine and gate from a single pyre the myriad flames of fate soul by soul transfigured in funereal fire hate made weak by love and love made strong by hate children without speech and many a nursing breast old men in the breach where death sat down aghast with triumphant lamentation made for each let the world salute their ruin and their rest in one iron hour the crescent flared and waned as from tower to tower fire scathed and sanguine stained death with flame in hand an open blood-red flower passed and where it bloomed no bloom of life remained hear thou earth the heavy-hearted weary nurse of waning races from the dust of years departed from obscure funereal places raise again thy sacred head lift the light up of thine eyes where are they of all thy dead that did more than these men dying in their godlike grecian wise not with garments rent and sighing neither gifts of myrrh and gold shall their sons lament them lying lest the fame of them wax cold but with lives to lives replying and worship from of old o sombre heart of earth and swollen with grief that in thy time wast as a bird from mirth dim womb of life and many a seed and sheaf and full of changes ancient heart of earth from grain and flower from grass and every leaf thy mysteries and thy multitudes of birth from hollow and hill from vales and all thy springs from all shapes born and breath of all lips made from thunders and the sound of winds and wings from light and from the solemn sleep of shade from the full fountains of all living things speak that this plague be stayed bear witness all the ways of death and life if thou be with us in the world's old strife if thou be mother indeed and from these wounds that bleed gather in thy great breast the dews that fall and on thy sacred knees lull with mute melodies mother thy sleeping sons in death's dim hall for these thy sons behold sons of thy sons of old bear witness if these be not as they were if that high name of greece depart dissolve decease from mouths of men and memories like as air by the last milk that drips dead on the child's dead lips by old men's white unviolated hair by sweet unburied faces that fill those red high places where death and freedom found one lion's lair by all the blood-red tears that fill the chaliced years the vessels of the sacrament of time wherewith o thou most holy o freedom sure and slowly thy ministrant white hands cleanse earth of crime though we stand off afar where slaves and slaveries are among the chains and crowns of poisonous peace 
though not the beams that shone from rent arcadian can melt her mists and bid her snows decrease do thou with sudden wings darken the face of kings but turn again the beauty of thy brows on greece thy white and woundless brows where to her great heart bows give her the glories of thine eyes to see turn thee o holiest head toward all thy quick and dead for love's sake of the souls that cry for thee o love o light o flame by thine own grecian name we call thee and we charge thee that all these be free end of poem all librivox recordings are in the public domain non dolet by algernon charles swinburne read for LibriVox.org by emma charlotte it does not hurt she looked along the knife smiling and watched the thick drops mix and run down the sheer blade not that which had been done could hurt the sweet sense of the roman wife but that which was to do yet ere the strife could end for each for ever and the sun nor was the palm yet nor was peace yet won while pain had power upon her husband's life it does not hurt italia thou art more than bride to bridegroom how shalt thou not take the gift love's blood has reddened for thy sake was not thy life-blood given for us before and if love's heart-blood can avail thy need and thou not die how should it hurt thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain eurydice by algernon charles swinburne read for librivox dot org by emma charlotte to victor hugo orpheus the night is full of tears and cries and hardly for the storm and ruin shed can even thine eyes be certain of her head who never passed out of thy spirit's eyes but stood and shone before them in such wise as when with love her lips and hands were fed and with mute mouth out of the dusty dead strove to make answer when thou bathed her rise yet viper stricken must her life blood feel the thang that stung her sleeping the foul germ even when she wakes of hell's most poisonous worm though now it writhe beneath her wounded heel turn yet she will not fade nor fly from thee wait and see how yield up eurydice end of poem this recording is in the public domain an appeal by algernon charles swinburne read for librivox dot org by corinne the page art thou indeed among these thou of the tyrannous crew the kingdoms fed upon blood o queen from old of the seas england art thou of them too that drink of the poisonous flood that hide under poisonous trees nay thy name from of old mother was pure or we dreamed purer we held thee than this purer fain would we hold so goodly a glory it seemed a fame so bounteous a bliss so more precious than gold a praise so sweet in our ears that thou in the tempest of things as a rock for a refuge should stand in the blood-red river of tears poured forth for the triumph of kings a safeguard a sheltering land in the thunder and torrent of years strangers came gladly to thee exiles chosen of men safe for thy sake in thy shade sat down at thy feet and were free so men spake of thee then now shall their speaking be stayed ah so let it not be not for revenge or affright 
pride or a tyrannous lust cast from thee the crown of thy praise mercy was thine in thy might strong when thou wert thou wert just now in the wrong-doing days cleave thou thou at least to the right how should one charge thee how sway save by the memories that were not thy gold nor the strength of thy ships nor the might of thine armies at bay made thee mother most fair but a word from republican lips said in thy name in thy day hast thou said it and hast thou forgot is thy praise in thine ears as a scoff blood of men guiltless was shed children and souls without spot shed but in places far off let slaughter no more be said milton and slaughter was not was it not said of thee too now but now by thy foes by the slaves that had slain their france and thee would slay as they slew down with her walls that enclose freemen that i as askance fugitives men that are true this was thy praise or thy blame from bondsmen or freemen to be pure from pollution of slaves clean of their sins in thy name bloodless innocent free now if thou be not thy waves wash not from off thee thy shame freemen he is not but slave who so in fear for the state cries for surety of blood help of gibbet and grave neither is any land great whom in her fear-stricken mood these things only can save lo how fair from afar taintless of tyranny stands thy mighty daughter for years who trod the winepress of war shines with immaculate hands slays not a foe neither fears stains not peace with a scar be not as a tyrant or slave england be not as these thou that wert other than they stretch out thine hand but to save put forth thy strength and release lest there arise if thou slay thy shame as a ghost from the grave november twentieth eighteen sixty seven end of poem this recording is in the public domain Perinde ac cadaver by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage In a vision Liberty stood by the childless charm-stricken bed, where barren of glory and good, knowing not if she would not or would, England slept with her dead, her face that the foam had whitened, her hands that were strong to strive, her eyes whence battle had lightened, over all was drawn shroud tightened to bind her asleep and alive she turned and laughed in her dream with grey lips arid and cold she saw not the face as a beam burn on her but only a gleam through her sleep as of new-stamped gold but the goddess with terrible tears in the light of her down-drawn eyes spake fire in the dull sealed ears thou sick with slumbers and fears wilt thou sleep now indeed or arise with dreams and with words and with light memories and empty desires thou hast wrapped thyself round all night thou hast shut up thine heart from the right and warmed thee at burnt-out fires yet once if i smote at thy gate thy sons would sleep not but heard o thou that was found so great art thou smitten with folly or fate that thy sons have forgotten my word o cromwell's mother o breast that suckled milton thy name that was beautiful then that was blessed is it wholly discrowned and depressed trodden under by sloth into shame why wilt thou hate me and die for none can hate me and live for what ill have i done to thee why wilt thou turn from me fighting and fly who would follow thy feet and forgive thou hast seen me stricken and said what is it to me i am strong thou hast seen me bowed down on my dead and laughed and lifted thine head and washed thine hands of my wrong thou hast put out the soul of thy sight thou hast sought to my foemen as friend to my traitors that kiss me and smite 
to their kingdoms and empires of night that begin with the darkness and end turn thee awaken arise with the light that has risen on the lands with the change of the fresh colored skies set thine eyes on mine eyes lay thy hands on my hands she moved and mourned as she heard sighed and shifted her place as the wells of her slumber were stirred by the music and wind of the word then turned and covered her face ah she said in her sleep is my work not done with and done is there corn for my sickle to reap and strange is the pathway and steep and sharp overhead is the sun i have done thee service enough loved thee enough in my day now nor hatred nor love nor hardly remembrance thereof lives in me to lighten my way and is it not well with us here is change as good as is rest what hope should move me or fear that i should open or ear who have long since won what is best where among us are such things as turn men's hearts into hell have we not queens without stings scotched princes and fangless kings yea she said we are well we have filed the teeth of the snake monarchy how should it bite should the slippery slow thing wake it will not sting for my sake yea she said i do right so spake she drunken with dreams mad but again in her ears a voice as of storm-swelled streams spake no brave shame then redeems thy lusts of sloth and thy fears thy poor lie slain of thy hands their starved limbs wrought in thy sight as a shadow the ghost of thee stands among men living and lands and stirs not leftward or right freeman he is not but slave who stands not out on my side his own hand hollows his grave nor strength is in me to save where strength is none to abide time shall tread on his name that was written for honour of old who hath taken in change for fame dust and silver and shame ashes and iron and gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Monotones by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf Because there is but one truth, Because there is but one banner, Because there is but one light, Because we have with us our youth once, and one chance and one manner of service and then the night because we have found not yet any way for the world to follow save only that ancient way whosoever forsake or forget whose faith soever be hollow whose hope soever grow gray because of the watchwords of kings that are many and strange and unwritten diverse and our watchword is one therefore though seven be the strings one string if the harp be smitten soul sounds till the tune be done sounds without cadence or change in a weary monotonous burden be the keynote of morning or mirth free but free not to range taking for crown and for guidance no man's praise upon earth saying one sole word evermore in the ears of the charmed world saying charmed by spells to its death one that chanted of yore to a tune of the sword sweeps playing in the lips of the dead blue breath therefore i set not mine hand to the shifting of changed modulations to the smiting of manifold strings while the thrones of the throned men stand one song for the mourning of nations one for the twilight of kings one chord one word and one way one hope as our law one heaven till slain be the great one wrong till the people it could not slay risen up have for one star seven for a single a sevenfold song and a poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Oblation by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schimpf. Ask nothing more of me, sweet. All I can give you, I give. Heart of my heart, were it more, more would be laid at your feet. Love that should help you to live, song that should spur you to soar. All things were nothing to give, once to have sense of you more. Touch you, and taste of you sweet think you and breathe you and live swept of your wings as they soar trodden by chance of your feet i that have love and no more give you but love of you sweet he that hath more let him give he that hath wings let him soar mine is the heart at your feet here that must love you to live end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Year's Burden by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage Fire and wild light of hope and doubt and fear, Wind of swift change and clouds and hours that veer, As the storm shifts of the tempestuous year, Cry well away, but well befall the right. Hope sits yet hiding her war-wearied eyes, Doubt sets her forehead earthward and denies, but fear brought hand to hand with danger dies, dies and is burnt up in the fire of fight. Hearts bruised with loss and eaten through with shame, turn at the time's touch to devouring flame. Grief stands as one that knows not her own name, nor if the star she sees bring day or night. No song breaks with it on the violent air, but shrieks of shame, defeat, and brute despair, Yet something at the star's heart, far up there, Burns as a beacon in our shipwrecked sight. O oh, strange fierce light of presage, unknown star, Whose tongue shall tell us what thy secrets are? What message trembles in thee from so far? Cry well away, but well befall the right. From shores laid waste across an iron sea, Where the waifs drift of hopes that were to be, Across the red rolled foam we look for thee, Across the fire we look up for the light. From days laid waste across disastrous years, From hopes cut down across a world of fears, We gaze with eyes too passionate for tears, Where faith abides though hope be put to flight. Old hope is dead, the grey-haired hope grown blind, That talked with us of old things out of mind, Dreams, deeds, and men the world has left behind. Yet, though hope die, faith lives in hope's despite. I, with hearts fixed on death and hopeless hands, We stand about our banner while it stands, Above but one field of the ruined lands, Cry well away, but well befall the right. Though France were given for prey to bird and beast, Though Rome were rent in twain of king and priest, The soul of man, the soul is safe at least, That gives death life, and dead men hands to smite. Are ye so strong, O kings, O strong men? Nay, waste all ye will, and gather all ye may. Yet one thing is there that ye shall not slay, even thought that fire nor iron can affright. The woundless and invisible thought that goes, free throughout time as north or south wind blows, far throughout space as east or west sea flows, and all dark things before it are made bright. Thy thought, thy word, O soul republican, O spirit of life, O God whose name is man, What sea of sorrows but thy sight shall span, Cry well away, but well befall the right. With all its coils crushed, all its rings uncurled, The one most poisonous worm that soiled the world, Is wrenched from off the throat of man and hurled, Into deep hell from empire's helpless height. Time takes no more infection of it now, like a dead snake divided of the plough, The rotten thing lies cut in twain, but thou, Thy fires shall heal us of the serpent's bite. I, with red cautery and a burning brand, Purge thou the leprous leaven of the land, Take to thee fire and iron in thine hand, 
till blood and tears have washed the soiled limbs white we have sinned against thee in dreams and wicked sleep smite we will shrink not strike we will not weep let the heart feel thee let thy wound go deep cry well away but well befall the right wound us with love pierce us with longing make our souls thy sacrifices turn and take our hearts for our sin offerings lest they break and mould them with thy hands and give them might then when the cup of ills is drained indeed will we come to thee with our wounds that bleed with famished mouths and hearts that thou shalt feed and see thee worshipped as the world's delight there shall be no wars nor kingdoms won but in thy sight whose eyes are as the sun all names shall be one name all nations one all souls of men in man's one soul unite o sea whereon men labour o great sea that heaven seems one with shall these things not be o earth our earth shall time not make us free cry well away but well befall the right end of poem this recording is in the public domain Epilogue by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons Between the wave ridge and the strand I let you forth in sight of land Songs that with storm crossed wings and eyes Strain eastward till the darkness dies Let signs and beacons fall or stand And stars and bale fires set and rise Ye, till some lordlier lyric hand Weave the beloved brows their crown, At the beloved feet lie down. O oh, whatsoever of life or light, Love hath to give you what of might, Or heart or hope is yours to live, I charge you take in trust to give, For very love's sake, in whose sight, Through poise of hours alternative, And seasons plumed with light or night, Ye live and move and have your breath, to sing with on the ridge of death i charge you faint not all night through for love's sake that was breathed on you to be to you as wings and feet for travel and as blood to heat and sense of spirit to renew and bloom a fragrance to keep sweet and fire a purpose to keep true the life if life in such things be that i would give you forth of me out where the breath of war may bear, Out in the rank moist reddened air That sounds and smells of death, And hath no light but death's upon its path, Seen through the black wind's tangled hair, I send you past the wild time's wrath To find his face who bade you bear Fruit of his seed to faith and love, That he may take the heart thereof. By day or night, by sea or street, Fly till ye find and clasp his feet, And kiss as worshippers Who bring too much love on their lips to sing, But with hushed heads accept and greet The presence of some heavenlier thing In the near air, so may ye meet his eyes, And droop not utterly for shame's sake At the light you see. Not utterly struck spiritless, for shame's sake and unworthiness, Of these poor forceless hands that come empty, these lips that should be dumb, This love whose seal can but impress, these weak word offerings wearisome, Whose blessings have not strength to bless, nor lightning's fire to burn up aught, Nor smite with thunders of their thought. One thought they have, even love, one light, truth that keeps clear the sun by night one cord of faith as of a lyre one heat of hope as of a fire one heart one music and one might one flame one altar and one choir and one man's living head in sight who said when all time's sea was foam let there be rome and there was rome as a star set in space for token like a live word of God's mouth spoken, visible sound, light audible, in the great darkness thick as hell, a staunchless flame of love unsloken, a sign to conquer and compel, a law to stand in heaven unbroken, 
whereby the sun shines and where through time's eldest empires are made new so rose up on our generations that light of the most ancient nations law life and light on the world's way the very god of very day the sun god from their star-like stations far down the night in disarray fled crowned with fires of tribulations the sons of sunless years whose light and life and law were of the night the naked kingdoms quenched and stark drave with their dead things down the dark helmless their whole world throne by throne fell and its whole heart turned to stone hopeless their hands that touched our ark withered and lo aloft alone on time's white waters man's one bark where the red sundawn's open eye lit the self gulf of lone green sky so for a season piloted it sailed the sunlight and struck red with fire of dawn reverberate the wan face of incumbent fate that paused half pitying overhead and almost had foregone the freight of those dark hours the next day bred for shame and almost had forsworn service of night for love of morn then broke the whole night in one blow thundering then all hell with one throw heaved and brought forth beneath the stroke death and all dead things moved and woke that the dawn's arrows had brought low at the great sound of night that broke thundering and all the old world wide woe and under night's loud sounding dome men sought her and she was not rome still with blind hands and robes blood wet night hangs on heaven reluctant yet with black blood dripping from her eyes on the soiled lintels of the skies with brows and lips that thirst and threat heart-sick with fear lest the sun rise and aching with her fires that set and shuddering ere dawn bursts her bars burns out with all her beaten stars in this black wind of war they fly now ere that hour be in the sky that brings back hope and memory back and light and law to lands that lack that spiritual sweet hour whereby the bloody-handed night and black shall be cast out of heaven to die kingdom by kingdom crown by crown the fires of darkness are blown down yet heavy grievous yet the weight sits on us of imperfect fate from wounds of other days and deeds still this day's breathing body bleeds still kings for fear and slaves for hate so lives of men on earth like seeds in the red soil they saturate and we with faces eastward set stand sightless of the morning yet and many for pure sorrow's sake look back and stretch back hands to take gifts of night's giving ease and sleep flowers of night's grafting strong to steep the souls in dreams it will not break songs of soft hours that sigh and sweep its lifted eyelids nigh to wake with subtle plumes and lulling breath that soothe its weariness to death and many called of hope and pride fall ere the sunrise from our side fresh lights and rumours of fresh fames that shift and veer by night like flames shouts and blown trumpets ghosts that glide calling and hail them by dead names fears angers memories dreams divide spirit from spirit and wear out strong hearts of men with hope and doubt till time beget and sorrow bear the soul-sick eyeless child despair that comes among us mad and blind with counsels of a broken mind tales of times dead and woes that were and prophesying against mankind shakes out the horror of her hair to take the sunlight with its coils and hold the living soul in toils by many ways of death and moods souls pass into their servitudes their young wings weaken plume by plume drops and their eyelids gather gloom and close against man's frauds and feuds 
and their tongues call they know not whom to help in their vicissitudes for many slaveries are but one liberty single as the sun one light one law that burns up strife and one sufficiency of life self-stablished the sufficing soul hears the loud wheels of changes roll sees against man man bear the knife sees the world severed and is whole sees force takes dowerless fraud to wife and fear from fraud's incestuous bed crawl forth and smite his father dead sees death made drunk with war sees time weave many colored crime with crime state overthrown on ruining state and dares not be disconsolate only the soul hath feet to climb only the soul hath room to wait hath brows and eyes to hold sublime above all evil and all good all strength and all decrepitude she only she since earth began the many-minded soul of man from one incognizable root that bears such diverse colored fruit hath ruled for blessing or for ban the flight of seasons and pursuit she regent she republican with wide and equal eyes and wings broods on things born in dying things even now for love or doubt of us the hour intense and hazardous hangs high with pinions vibrating whereto the light and darkness cling dividing the dim season thus and shakes from one ambiguous wing shadow and one is luminous and day falls from it so the past torments the future to the last and we that cannot hear or see the sounds of lights of liberty the witness of the naked god that treads on burning hours unshod with instant feet unwounded we that can trace only where he trod by fire in heaven or storm at sea not know the very present whole and naked nature of the soul we that see wars and woes and kings and portents of enormous things empires and agonies and slaves and whole flame of town swallowing graves that hear the harsh hours clap sharp wings above the roar of ranks like waves from wreck to wreck as the world swings know but that men there are who see and hear things other far than we by the light sitting on their brows the fire wherewith their presence glows the music falling with their feet the sweet sense of a spirit sweet that with their speech or motion grows and breathes and burns men's hearts with heat by these signs there is none but knows men who have life and grace to give men who have seen the soul and live by the strength sleeping in their eyes the lips whereon their sorrow lies smiling the lines of tears unshed the large divine look of one dead that speaks out of the breathless skies in silence when the light is shed upon man's soul of memories the supreme look that sets love free the look of stars and of the sea by the strong patient god had seen implicit in their mortal mien the conscious of a god held still and thunders ruled by their own will and fast-bound fires that might burn clean this worldly air that foul things fill and the afterglow of what has been that passing shows us without word what they have seen what they have heard by all these keen and burning signs the spirit knows them and divines in bonds in banishment in grief scoffed at and scourged with unbelief foiled with false trusts and thwart designs stripped of green days and hopes in leaf their mere bare body of glory shines higher and man gazing surelier sees what light what comfort is of these so i now gazing till the sense being set on fire of confidence strains itself sunward feels out far beyond the bright and morning star 
beyond the extreme waves refluence to where the fierce first sunbeams are whose fire intolerant and intense as birth pains whence day burns to be parts breathless heaven from breathing sea i see not know not and am blessed master who know that thou knowest dear lord and leader at whose hand the first days and the last days stand with scars and crowns on head and breast that fought for love of the sweet land or shall fight in her latter quest all the days armed and girt and crowned whose glories ring thy glory round thou sawest when all the world was blind the light that should be of mankind the very day that was to be and how shall thou not sometimes see thy city perfect to thy mind stand face to living face with thee and no miscrowned man's head behind the hearth of man the human home the central flame that shall be rome as one that ere a june day rise makes seaward for the dawn and tries the water with delighted limbs that taste the sweet dark sea and swims right eastward under strengthening skies and sees the gradual rippling rims of waves whence day breaks blossom wise take fire ear light peer well above and laughs from all his heart with love and softlier swimming with raised head feels the full flower of morning shed and fluent sunrise round him rolled that laps and laves his body bold with fluctuant heaven in water's stead and urgent through the growing gold strikes and sees all the spray flash red and his soul takes the sun and yearns for a joy wherewith the sea's heart burns soul the soul seeking through the dark heavenward a dove without an ark transcends the unnavigable sea of years that wear out memory so calls a sunward singing lark in the ear of souls that should be free so points them toward the sun for mark who steer not for the stress of waves and seek strange helmsmen and are slaves for if the swimmer's eastward eye must see no sunrise must put by the hope that lifted him and led once to have light about his head to see beneath the clear low sky the green foam whitened wave wax red and all the morning's banner fly then as earth's helpless hopes go down let earth's self in the dark tides drown yea if no morning must behold man other than were they now cold and other deeds than past deeds done nor any near or far off sun salute him risen and sun-like souled free boundless fearless perfect one let man's world die like worlds of old and here in heaven's sight only be the sole sun on the worldless sea and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Songs Before Sunrise by Algernon Charles Swinburne.